What's up everyone, this is Sulky, and I recently started playing Dead by Daylight, and while this game has been out for quite a bit, I wanted to go over some tips for beginners that would have really helped me when I first started playing as Killer. In this video, we'll be going over things you can look out for as you get into the game, and what helps me as I progress through a match. If this video ends up helping you, be sure to leave a like, and let's get started at the beginning. So what do you do when you first get into a match? Tip number one, do not camp out near the generators that are near you in the beginning of a game and expect survivors to start completing those generators. Survivors are likely going to spawn further away from you at the start of a match. Explore the generators furthest from you to try and find the survivors early on and stop them from completing a generator right away. This will give you an opportunity to either find your first survivor or at least damage the generator that they were working on to hurt their progress on it. And speaking of generators, let's Let's talk about something else to watch out for. So if there's seven generators on your maps and survivors need to complete five to open the gates, think about which generators make the most sense for you to block. Say survivors have gotten four of the outer generators. That means that the remaining three could be very close together. This will give you a good opportunity to stay close by these, giving the survivors a harder time for completing that last generator. You can quickly and easily move back and forth between the three and apply a lot of pressure on the survivors. Now tip number three, let's talk about actually finding survivors and chasing them. Most likely you're either going to get one hit in immediately when you see a survivor or you're going to chase them for that first hit. We'll get into when to stop chasing survivors in a bit, but let's first talk about how to get that second hit in. Because killers have a higher walking speed than survivors do, you'll be able to catch up to them quickly. However, there are obstacles that survivors can put in your way to slow you down and make their escape. They can lunge and go through windows, use a flashlight to temporarily blind you, use one of their healthy teammates to walk in your way while the injured survivor makes a run for it, or they can use a pallet to stun you. Before we get into pallets, let's first talk about items your survivor may have. You can easily see what they're holding by looking at their character. Try and remember this because it may save you for a stun or a bad situation later on. Say you see a survivor near you while you're holding your victim that has a toolbox. Perhaps shifting the directions quickly that you were going in and getting to another hook instead get you out of an issue of you losing your hook to their toolbox and your victim can escape because of this. Or maybe you notice someone with a flashlight near you when you've just downed a survivor. Either turn yourself around before you pick up that downed survivor so you're not facing the direction of the person with the flashlight or if you're already holding that downed survivor keep your head head down while you walk toward your hook as to not to get blinded. All right, now let's focus on pallets for a moment. Survivors can time you walking in front of a pallet just right to make it fall on you and momentarily stun you. Being patient and letting them drop it while you're still a distance away will be much more beneficial for you than getting stunned. Think about what the survivor is doing with the pallet. Are they planning on looping you around a pallet to waste time? Time your chase just right to lunge at them with your attack while they're sliding over the pallet? Are you playing as a killer that can place a trap on the floor like Freddy or the Hag that can give you a momentary lead on your survivor? When you first hit your survivor, did they seem like they knew their next game plan or are they confused and frazzled on what to do next? These are all things to consider in gauge while you're getting looped around that pallet. That could give you an advantage. Which leads me to my next tip. Do not allow the survivors an opportunity to waste your time too much much with these chases. Remember before that I had mentioned those generators? Don't allow them an opportunity to pick the generator to do and leave you in a rut when the last three are spread across the map, giving them a better opportunity to complete them. Even if a survivor you're after seems like a huge troll and it would be great to hook them, think about the bigger picture. Sometimes it's better to give up a chase and figure out what the other survivors were doing with all that time that you just let get away. Always pay attention to how many generators have been completed completed and focus on forcing the survivors to go to a less ideal place to give you an advantage in the later portion of the match. Now remember, when you do hook someone, you are taking time away from the other survivors that could be helping with generators. You have a decent amount of time between you picking up the survivor and you finding a hook. Do you want to place them on the closest hook to you? Or do you maybe want to go out of your way a bit to an area where there aren't any generators?
generators close by for survivors to do. I would argue that your hook placement can help you win back some time, and this is why. You're forcing the survivors to go out of their way to travel to a place that isn't beneficial for them. If someone unhooks another person and there's a generator that needs to be done right in front of them, they're of course going to go and do that very quickly. So save yourself by wasting their time and hooking the survivor further away from where they need to be. When I play a survivor, ideally one member of the team, or two depending on the situation, focuses on unhooking while other survivors go off and do a generator. Don't bother camping out in front of the hook waiting for your next victim. It's not a great thing to do for many reasons, but besides etiquette, you also want to be able to put pressure on a person that could potentially be doing a generator while the other survivors are off saving their teammate from the hook. It wastes time traveling and sneaking to another part of the map to help a friend, and you can have a good opportunity here to find the survivor progressing on the next generator and stop their progress. Or another way you can look at it is if you just down a teammate that immediately goes to help their friend once they're hooked, if you happen to find them first. But again, don't just hang around the hook waiting for this opportunity. You ideally want to at least move somewhat away from the hook to avoid camping, but if someone ran randomly appears very quickly, take it as an opportunity, don't be too nice and let them have it. But ultimately, what helped me with my killer strategy the most was getting a feel for playing as Survivor, understanding what habits people fall into, what it looks like to play on the other side, and what strategies me and my teammates use to get an advantage in the game. All of this will help you out when you play as killer. Hopefully you found this video helpful, if you did be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more gaming content. I always appreciate the support and I will see you in the next video.